You've been losing your hair for months or maybe even years at this point. You started noticing that you could see little bits of your scalp peeping through your hair whenever you looked in the mirror or a friend uploaded a photo of you from the back on their Instagram story and you couldn't believe how big your bald patch was looking. You've tried using things like Rogaine or some oral supplements and nothing seems to be working, but you're not ready to give up yet. And then you hear about this new type of treatment called PRP, which people say is an alternative to a hair transplant and could save your hair. If this sounds familiar to you, then you clicked on the right video. Here, we're gonna discuss everything you need to know about PRP so that by the end of this video, you can feel totally educated and ready to make a decision on if it's the right treatment for you. My name is Dr. Sayed, AKA Real Skin Doctor, and I'm a medical doctor based in New York City who specializes in dermatology. For those of you who are new to the channel, it's my aim to guide you through the crazy and confusing world of skincare and dermatology using some real scientific facts. If you're tired of getting advice about skincare and hair loss from anonymous people on forums online, subscribe to the channel for a voice you can trust on these subjects. I always like to give information to my viewers here using stories from my real life clinical experience. So I'm going to tell you about my patient, we'll call him Xavier for the purpose of this video, who came to my clinic asking about PRP for hair loss. Broadly speaking, the video is going to follow the structure you see here in the timestamps. So if you're really keen to jump ahead to one specific part, go ahead. Otherwise, kick back and join me in the clinic. So Xavier is a 35 year old guy and we'll keep it general. He works in a law enforcement profession. He's been getting a hard time on the job from his co-workers because for the last couple of years, he's been losing hair. Side note, public service announcement. Guys out there, stop making fun of your friends for losing their hair. It's not cool. So Xavier acts like he doesn't care. It's no big deal to him. But for the last couple of months to years, he's actually been trying a bunch of different products to try to save whatever hair he has left. So he started off trying to use Rogaine, which a lot of you will have heard of and which I'm going to be doing a video about pretty soon, which I'll link up here once I've done it. But he found that he just wasn't able to do it consistently. And who could blame him? It's hard enough remembering to brush your teeth every night, let alone having to brush your teeth and floss and put in foam in your scalp and then have all of that foam run over onto your pillow and all those kind of things. He then looked into some hormonal treatments, things like finasteride, which again, I will be making a video about. So check it on my channel if you're watching this later on. But he was scared off by some of the potential side effects, including things like sexual dysfunction. So he just didn't want to hear anything else about finasteride as a type of treatment. He was almost ready to book himself a flight to Turkey to get one of those cheap hair transplants before he came across an article online talking about PRP. So he did the smart thing, if I might say so myself, and he came to see his dermatologist to talk about it. So we all have blood flowing through our bodies and the liquid part of blood is known as plasma. Red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, growth factors, and a bunch of other proteins are all mixed together and they are suspended in this plasma as they're sent around the body. The role of red blood cells is to carry oxygen to the different cells in the body that need it. And the role of white blood cells is to help fight infections and play a role in our immune system. Those are both very useful functions, but not specifically when we're trying to regrow our hair. So if we take those parts out and we make a constant concentrated solution of what's left, that is known as platelet-rich plasma. So let me talk you through the step-by-step -step of what would happen if you were going to get PRP injections done at a clinic. So the first ingredient that we would need is actually blood itself. And every PRP injection is made using the patient's own blood because this maximizes the safety and the tolerance of the procedure. So make sure you drink plenty of water on the morning of your PRP injections because you really don't want your vein to give way halfway through. Next, they take the special test tube which now has your blood in and they take it to a machine known as a centrifuge which spins it really fast. Using some clever physics means that the heavier parts of your blood like red blood cells and white blood cells all get pushed towards the end of the test tube and there's a specific gel separator there which keeps them apart. At the end of the spinning, you're left with the tube, the gel separator, the red blood cells and white blood cells at the bottom of it, and then on top of it, you're left with plasma. So how does plasma become platelet-rich plasma? you get rid of the platelet poor plasma. This means that you take out the solution from the very top of the test tube and you leave what's right above the gel separator, which has the highest density of growth factors and platelets and all the good proteins that we want to inject back into your scalp. So we then transfer this volume of platelet rich plasma into syringes and we come back to the clinic room where you're looking terrified and we inject the platelet rich plasma into your scalp. Now, we can't just inject it into one place and hope that it spreads out everywhere we need it. We really do need to inject it all over the scalp. So if your reduction in hair density is in quite a wide area of your scalp and you have an average head size, you're talking at least over 20 injections no to get way. the PRP into all of the areas that it needs to be. That probably doesn't sound like the most fun experience. So a lot of you are probably wondering at this stage, how often would we need to get this done? The most widely accepted treatment protocol for PRP and hair loss at the moment is to have one round of injections per month for three months in a row, and then to have maintenance injections done every six months after that point. So the big question, does PRP actually work? And the short answer is yes, for some people. 
Now this is a new area of research, but some high quality studies, including those done by personal colleagues of mine at Mount Sinai Hospital, have shown in placebo controlled, double blinded studies that PRP can improve hair density and hair growth compared to placebos. So in these studies, some people are getting real PRP injections and some people are getting placebo injections of things like water. They're then following these patients at set intervals of multiple months and comparing which of them have had improvement in their hair growth and which of them haven't, using assessors who are blinded, meaning they don't know whether the person they're assessing has had the real PRP injection or if they've had the placebo injection. Afterwards, when they gathered all of the information together, they were able to show that there is a statistically significant difference in the amount of hair density and hair growth experienced by those people who had the real PRP injections versus those who just had water injections, for example. So clearly there is some truth in the theory behind the use of PRP for hair loss. The problem is that for some people, it had absolutely no effect at all. Now the issue here is there's not enough research done to show us which type of people had a good response and which type of people had no response. For example, does it work well in women but not men? Or does it work well in old people but not young people? Or does it work well in Asians but not white people? We just don't know at this stage. So I want to quickly go through some of the pros and cons of PRP to help you make up your mind of whether or not you want to pursue this type of treatment. Let's start with the pros. Number one, PRP is a very safe treatment. You're not going to get some kind of a weird reaction in your body because all we're doing is taking your blood, processing it, concentrating the growth factors and putting them where we think they're needed most, which is in your scalp. There are also very low rates of infections and complications. The other pro of PRP is that it could prevent you having to do the other strategies to treat your hair loss, like taking tablets or like getting a hair transplant, which is overall a much more extensive procedure than getting PRP injections. Another pro is that there's no downtime, meaning that you could get the PRP injections and carry on the rest of your day without having to think I have to hide away from work for two weeks because when you have a hair transplant, for example, it'll be very noticeable for a pretty long time afterwards. And finally, the biggest advantage for a lot of people is that it avoids you having to do anything daily like for example putting Rogaine foam in your scalp daily or taking a tablet daily you don't have to do that you have to initially have an injection once a month for three months and after that point you can ignore everything else and just once every six months go in get your injections done which are going to be a bit of a pain in the head and then you can carry on your life as normal otherwise. Let's talk about the cons. And the first and foremost when it comes to the cons is the price. The specific costs vary depending on where you get it done, but it can be anywhere from around about $500 per injection at the cheaper places in a city, all the way up to multiple thousand dollars per injection if you're going to a celebrity dermatologist or plastic surgeon, for example. So let's say we average that out to like a thousand dollars per injection and you have to do that treatment once a month for three months, followed by every six months after that. That means you'd be spending around about $4,000 in year one and then around about $2,000 every year afterwards. Now that's not cheap. Compare that to the alternatives of things like Rogaine foam, which might cost you around about say 300 to $350 for a whole year, or an even cheaper alternative, something like a prescription finasteride tablet which is the hormone treatment we talked about and that would probably cost you like $20 for the entire year if your insurance covered it. However if you're comparing PRP to hair transplants those can be anywhere from you know ten to fifteen thousand dollars and you would hope that it's a one and done and you'll never have to worry about it again but hair transplants can get rejected years down the line leaving you with the same problem you had at square one. The next big con is that it is painful. As you can imagine we literally need to inject your scalp with a needle anywhere from say 30 to 50 times to get the PRP where it needs to be. Maybe in the future we can figure out a less painful way of delivering this, but the issue with just for example rubbing PRP onto the scalp and hoping it absorbs is that the hair follicle is actually much deeper than other parts of the skin and that's what we're trying to get to, the base of the hair follicle to try to stimulate the growth. And right now there's no other way around it. We have to put the needle in there and we have to deliver the PRP at the root. And the third big con of it, which I kind of touched upon earlier, is that you may go through all of that hassle, the cost and the pain, and it may actually have no effect for you at all. Because right now, we don't know which type of people reliably benefit from PRP and which type of people don't respond. So you're gonna be taking on that risk. So let's get back to Xavier's case. Did I recommend him to go for PRP injections? So in his case, I actually did. I think the key when it comes to discussing PRP is complete transparency. I never wanna be the kind of dermatologist who overhypes any treatment or who promises the world to patients just to try and make some profit. And it's worth mentioning here that I was a trainee at the point, which meant that I kept none of the money from the procedure anyway. So Xavier ended up taking the plunge and luckily for him, he was actually one of the patients who responded really well to PRP. Now it wasn't as dramatic as a hair transplant, for example, but Xavier noticed a meaningful 
noticeable difference in the density of his hair, and he ended up keeping up PRP injections long into the future, even when he moved on from our clinic. Hopefully this evidence-based, scientific, and unbiased explanation of PRP gave you the answers that you were looking for. Hair loss is a distressing, confusing, and very common problem in the general population, with a ton of different causes. I've made some other videos on the topic before, and I will continue to do so in the future, so check out the channel for other videos that might interest you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.